Spurgeon, <laughs> as he reminds me so much of all those that have come before and the wisdom that they had and the relationship that they participated in with God, when we read of it, we see a difference between what they experienced and what we did, if only just for the way that they express it. Sometimes the words themselves sound so eloquent and so chosen or so relating in a different way that it amazes me sometimes to think about people like Spurgeon and John Gill and those who came before that <laughs> they're not much different than we are. They seem to have been more focused than we are, but they seem to have had just as much a love for God, if not more, than we do. And when I read about it, I think of how the world was a different place and yet how hard it is it seems in these latter days to not be attracted by distraction because of all the technocracy and technology that we've invented for ourselves that take us away from God rather than to Him. I wonder if Spurgeon saw that coming as Tozer did or as others and sometimes doesn't have a warning for us. He might. I know God is speaking to us every day, and as we read our devotionals and devotionals, He can better share with us what we need to do to be focused in on Him as opposed to being consumed by the distortion of focus that the world offers to us. He shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall enter, or he shall bear the glory, from Zechariah. Christ himself is the builder of his spiritual temple, and he has built it on the mountains of his unchangeable affection, his omnipotent grace, and his infallible truthfulness. But, as it was in Solomon's temple, so in this, the materials need to be made ready. There is the cedars of Lebanon, but they are not framed for the building. They are not cut down and shaped and made into those planks of cedar whose odoriferous beauty should make glad the courts of the Lord's house in paradise. They are also the rough stones still in the quarry. They must be hewn and dense and squared. All this is Christ's own work. That's what Jesus does in you and I. Each individual believer is being prepared and polished and made ready for his place in the temple. But Christ's own hand performs the preparation work. Afflictions cannot sanctify, excepting as they are used by him for this purpose. Our prayers and efforts cannot make us ready for heaven, apart from the hand of Jesus who fashioned our hearts correctly. As in the building of Solomon's temple, there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house, because all was brought perfectly ready for the exact spot it was to occupy. So is it with the temple which Jesus builds. The making ready is all done on earth. When we reach heaven, there will be no sanctifying us there, no squaring us with affliction, no planing us with suffering. No, we must be made here and meet here all that Christ will do to us and for us beforehand. And when he has done it, we shall be ferried by a loving hand across the stream of death and brought to the heavenly Jerusalem to abide as eternal pillars in the temple of our Lord. God designed you and purposed you for eternity. He made a way that you could know him. He opened the door that you could walk into heaven, literally. He has given every good gift that we could possibly need for salvation and provided his own spirit that we might better serve his purposes here on earth, not only for ourselves to be prepared for the temple in heaven, but to bring others who likewise are part of that house of God. What ought we be do? What should we be doing then? I hope we would be giving to God our time and our day to find those things which He is doing in us to accomplish His purpose and we would let go of the things that are holding us behind. When I used to drop trees, 
trees would fall over and you'd leave the stump and then you'd have to go back and cut it out but you know when the wind blows down the trees you can see just slowly it begin to topple and as it falls you see the roots come out of the ground and you see that they cling to the earth we don't just listen to God and obey any more than the tree you could just say to it become a become a board and suddenly it is we don't obey God any more than the tree obeys the word that you might say to it become two boards nailed together what we do is we yield ourselves daily to God working in us so that he could accomplish a purpose that we might not know where we fit or how we fit but as he does when we arrive we are perfected so in your struggles and turmoils and trials today whatever they may be as you see things happening around you recognize that it's the hand of the Lord working in you to accomplish what he wants for you so that you could be used by him not just to fit in his temple but to live forever with God that's your destiny this stomping grounds that you're in is just preparing you for eternity and that's about all it's good for.